Oh man, this sucks. I need this stealth machine to film my Seek Thermal Night Vision video tonight. Looks like the valve stem's rotten. Valve stems are a gateway device for inflating and deflating tires and for measuring the tire pressure. Every tire has one whether it's an inner tube or on a tubeless setup. You don't give them much thought until one fails. They're made of rubber, brass, steel, and plastic. And like everything else on your car that's rubber or has moving parts, they do fail. While it's not common to fail on your 2008 and newer cars due to beefier TPMS systems, these things fail all the time on older cars, trailers, ATVs, and other equipment. So in my truck I carry a couple of different kinds because you'd be surprised how many types there are and you really can't fill a tire with air for very long without one. Such an occasion arose recently with my golf cart. The day I got the cart running it did fine, but that night as I was pulling it into the garage I noticed a hissing sound. The hiss was tracked down to be coming from the base of the valve stem where the rubber had failed. I had plans to use the cart later that night to sneak around the neighborhood in the dark filming my Seek infrared device review so I searched my kit to find I only had one of a couple of uh, TR-415's available. They were too big for the hole. I was unprepared because I had used my TR-413's to rescue a family member's trailer and another one to rescue my neighbor's four-wheeler. I didn't want to drill out the hole because then that would require chamfering and paint to prevent cutting the new valve stem and rusting. Ain't nobody got time for that. I ended up cutting a clamp style Schrader valve from an old dirt bike inner tube and MacGyvering that to work with a little Permatex Right stuff I added as cheap assurance against leaking. This worked for over a week but I didn't want to press my luck so I'm replacing it now. As you can see from this chart there are two basic styles of tubeless valve stems snap in and clamp on. Most cars, trailers, ATVs and light trucks will use the snap in valve stems that are rated to 65 psi and most high pressure applications like heavy duty trucks, vans and trailers will use a clamp on valve stem that are rated to 100 psi. You could use a high pressure clamp on stem on a low pressure application but it would be more time and money to make it work. And, uh, and that's if there was room for the nut on the outside of the rim. Clamp-ons are good to have in your kit for emergencies because of their versatility though. They cover many applications and the, that the snap-ons don't. Replacing a valve stem is easy with the right tools and the right valve stem. The hard part is getting the right one and getting access. The tire bead can be a challenge to remove without a tire machine. I've included links in the description to a couple of videos on successfully breaking a tire bead with just what you have on your car, including one by my buddy Mo, who goes by uh, 65 Ford here on YouTube. Check him out. What I've done on the mountain and in the desert where I didn't have a tire machine is remove the wheel, lay it on the ground, and run over the tire sidewall to pop the bead down. Sometimes using a 2x4 or plywood as a pseudo ramp tire shovel will do the trick. A bottle jack can also be used on the top of the tire bead and under a truck bumper or a trailer bumper. Once the bead is broken on the outside of the wheel, getting the valve stem in requires a puller tool. This could be a four-way tool, a cable puller, or a valve stem install lever like this one here to get it snapped into place. I'll put links in the description for your convenience where to get them. Each of these tools has its advantages and trade-offs between versatility, portability, and ease of use. I really like the cable one on the road, and I really like the lever one in the shop and with a tire machine. The four-way tool is a must in the shop and in the mobile toolbox because it can do so much, and like the valve stem, when you need it, you need it. It's like a tap and die set for valve stems, but it also has a core remover on it, and as I said before, you can pull a snap-in valve into place with it. When pulling a snap-in valve, it's important to make sure that the hole is clean and to use a little lubrication, even if that means spitting on it. Lube makes it go together a little easier, but it also protects the stem from abrasion that can result in a leak. To remove a snap-in valve, just cut it off or chisel it off at the base. Thanks for watching. 